So a Senate panel examining the origins of COVID and experts testified on the various theories they believe could have caused the virus and ranging from an act of nature or whether it was leaked from the research lab in Wuhan, China. Here's a bit of it. Watch. I believe the available evidence uh, points most strongly to a natural zoonotic spillover event as the origin of the pandemic. I do not believe that the available scientific evidence, when considered holistically, supports that the virus was created in a lab at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. I assess that a large preponderance of evidence indicates SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID, entered humans through a research incident. I'll describe the six approaches to the question that all support a lab leak as a source and co can go deeper into each of those with questions. Uh, yeah, Dr. Quay is our next guest, and um, he went through them in a very specific way. He joins us now, CEO of Atosa Therapeutics. Thank you so much, doctor, um, for joining us today. You Pleasure know, to be here. There's, there's a good editorial in the Wall Street Journal this morning, um, and, and, I wanna, and I think it puts a fine point on it. So I just want to read this and, and ask you to address the first part of it first and then the second part of it after that. The real COVID failure... Its super fast spread told us early the virus was unstoppable and likely lab modified. And the second part of it goes on to say that goes on to say Americans have now experienced the disease and realized it was far from unendurable. The lockdowns were needless destruction. Test, trace, and quarantine was absurd and worthless when 90% of infections were unreported. These steps were a political show. So to the first point, doctor, super fast, unstoppable, and likely lab modified. That is really your theory and has been all along, right? Well, it's one of the many pieces of evidence that it was engineered uh, because a new virus from nature isn't very good at infecting humans. So mm -hmm. for who's infected, it's bad. But human to human transmission is not observed in a natural virus. Here we had something very different. And my concern is that scientists in the U.S. who knew about this research, Dr. Fauci, Dr. Collins, they knew this and yet they failed to tell the frontline doctors, hey, you got to watch out for human to human transmission. Taiwan did that properly, they had 2% of our deaths. Mm. That's what could have happened in the U.S. That's astonishing. Um, why would they not make that known if they knew that, as you say? Well, you know, there's a small 1% of NIH grants involve gain-of-function research, but these people's livelihood, their paychecks, depend on doing this kind of research. If it's known it came from a lab, if it's known it's been modified in a lab, if they, it's known they made it purposely asymptomatic, purposely human-to-human -human transmissible, uh, they would have to expose that process in order to give frontline doctors the proper advice. But I, I just don't see how so you can do that. So you're saying because of morally. money... And because of money, Dr. Fauci decided not to let people know that this was a lab-born virus. Is that what you're saying? He has a record of about 15 years of supporting gain-of-function research. My own analysis is that that kind of research has led to no useful civilian uses uh, in medicine. So he was willing to put that, that investment, those 15 years of connection with gain-of-function research... Um, as a priority rather than the spread and the killing of millions of people globally. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, if, that's right. If you know the first week of January there's human to human transmission, you get that information to the frontline doctors. They act differently. They act the way the doctors did in Taiwan. You end up with 2,000 deaths instead of 1 million. And what did they do differently in Taiwan that we should have done? Because now Dr. Fauci is saying, you know what, we should have left the schools open. We should have opened them up a lot earlier. <sighs> and he's accepting a lot of the cultural and societal damage that we are still all suffering from, doctor. Yeah. So they, they, they did a very simple thing, minor inconvenience. They boarded every plane that was coming from Wuhan. They took temperatures before the people got out of their seats. They quarantined those folks with temperatures. They contact traced all the people on the flights coming from Wuhan, and that's how they avoided it. Six percent of the Taiwanese population is in Japan, he misspoke, is in China at any given time, either visiting family, doing business. So they were the country that should have had the highest penetration of the virus. But by taking that simple step, the end of December, uh, they were able to get it down to 2 percent of what the U.S. had. It's shocking. Um, and now he's uh, selling another book and going on a big publicity tour and talking about how he um, handled all of this so well. Um, 
Thank you, Doctor. Dr. Stephen Kay, thank you very much. Good to have you here. I hope everybody pays attention to what you're saying, and I hope it prevents, um, I hope we behave much more responsibly the next time around. Martha, can I say one Please. thing? I would like every one of your viewers who lost a loved one to write your congressman, tell them the name of that loved one, describe what they meant to your family, and tell them to honor their life by investigating this origin. Good advice, sir. Doctor, thank you very much. It's great to have you here.